Oh, now it says 39 bushels per acre, 42. 40, that's like a bumper crop this year. That would be a little bit below average for a normal year. My bushels per acre meter is reading 42. What's yours reading? Zero. <laughs> zero it must not be working then but 42 would be great i doubt that it's probably t closer to 30 in this field because i'm getting anywhere from 19 to 42. my dad is taking a ride with arvid just to kind of re-watch everything he's doing and give him an updated lesson because you need that to happen i do that with my dad every single year combining and take rides with him various days so that he can make sure everything's going well and my technique is is how it should be because these are big pieces of machinery and you want to keep them running and you also want to make sure that you put safety as a as your highest priority now it says 43 bushels per acre oh my goodness that is so nice this is 43 bushels per acre this might be the whole bumper crop of the season so now or i guess these are just sticks in the field i'm not really sure what they are but you definitely can't hit them so what I'll do is, normally I run my wheat swath right down the center. I'll run it more toward the left side of my combine. And you want it down the center so it doesn't have to travel through by the belt all the way to the center. At that point, you already have more wheat in the combine and it just can't move as fast, logistically. Arvid's rows a lot smaller than mine though, so that's pretty interesting. I think this might be the biggest row in the whole field. Let's see what these signs say. Petroleum pipeline. So it's not a water spigot. I was wrong there. Definitely don't want to hit those. Active header height control problem. My dad didn't calibrate the headers before harvest, so the header float may or may not be working. A lot of things that these combines can do may or may not be working from the technology standpoint. We're a little bit more old school. As long as the combine's running, picking up wheat, putting it in this grain tank and getting it to the grain cart or truck, and grain bin, we're all good. <laughs> I've now made it to the end of the west pass of the field, or almost to the end. I have a little bit left, and then I'll be taking a south pass, and that will be my last one. I don't have any grain in my window yet, but my back window is full, and I don't have a grain tank buzzer, so I'll for sure make it to the other end. I'm still going three miles an hour. I've kind of less left dad and Arvid in the dust they might be going a bit slower my return auger is only filling up half or a quarter of the way so that's pretty good and the return auger is just how much wheat that the combine isn't processing the first round and it has to send back to process the second time and processing is just taking all of the chaff off the wheat like the straw covering I had to do a little bit of a different turn there because I'm right next to the road. Slow down, put my header down on the ground. You want to go into the wheat swath at first at a slower speed to start the combine out a bit easier and then you start to increase your speed to your cruise speed as you get further into the swath. So now I'm going three miles an hour which is kind of my cruise speed and I also have a power line this path. So quite a few obstacles with this wheat swath but it'll be okay. It's almost noon, so I would say lunch is coming out soon. There was another one of those little mini wind tornadoes that I picked up, so now I'm centering my combine back up. I started driving combine with my dad when I was just a little baby. Well, I guess I wasn't really driving then, but that's when I first started taking rides, and I have photos of me sitting on my dad's lap. And I would always be out on the combine at least for a week or so during harvest growing up and take time off the very activity, various activities I was doing. So I, even though my dad wasn't training me to run combine then, I think it just registers to you as a child and you start to pick up on little things. So when I was 12 years old, I ran a couple passes in the field by myself and my dad would get out of the combine and watch me do a pass and things like that on flat fields. And then when it came to run combine full time, when I was 15 years old, my dad took one lap around the field with me and said, okay, it's yours. Because I had already had knowledge about what the buttons do and it almost came more naturally because I had grown up with it. And I also, my first dump in the grain cart was on the go. So that's kind of the story of how I got started and that when you're, really young and in a big machine like this you would think you're not picking up on anything going on 
but it's actually priming you for when you're gonna run the machine later in life, years later. So now I'm going around the power pool and my dad told me be very careful. And then yesterday at dinner when I took over the combine, my dad said, don't wreck it. And I said, no promises. I just wanna make sure I cleared this power line. I think I have right now. My grain tank is not full, but do you want me to dump anyway on this pass? Yeah, if, we, if you can get dumped before you get to the end while we dump, lunch is gonna be here not very long though. Okay, we'll be along the north road. Okay, when you get this uh, dumped or to the end of this road, we'll just road back up along the main road here and we'll have dinner along the road somewhere. Sounds good, thank you. I'm putting my auger out right now and this should be the indication to the grain cart to come and dump me. So we'll see if he's paying attention. And he is, so that's awesome. Sometimes our cart drivers, you think, fall asleep in the cart because they never come when you need them. Depending on how fast he gets over here, we might just stop or we might do a dump on the go. I would do a dump on the go right now, but he's still quite far away. So I think by the time I get closer to the end, we won't have time to fully dump before the end of the row happens. And you don't want to get new green cart drivers into that type of situation. We'll just stop for this. We're getting fairly close to the end. So I'll shut my header off. And he lined up about center to me. So that's perfect. Right in the center, that's awesome, thank you. He did a really good job of lining up this time. Sometimes when I have to stop for dumps, I accidentally idle it down because I'm used to stopping the combine and idling it down. And then you realize the grain only comes out at half speed, so you have to idle it back up. And that was very good of the grain cart too because you're never supposed to leave a combine driver before they put their auger in. A lot of grain cart drivers in the past I've had have blasted off before the auger goes in and then you drop grain on the ground. Always have to wave at everyone in your harvest operation because it puts a smile on their face and it brightens my day and theirs. And it just makes everyone a little bit happier. So it looks like we're stopping for lunch after I get to the end of this row. It looks like my dad's going to do a dump on the go with our grain car driver. I probably could have done it, but I just didn't feel like it. So I think the first dump with your grain car driver, if you're both new to each other, should always be a stop. Oh. It looks like my dad did stop. Yes, he did. Oh no, he's not gonna stop for it. So I'll road over to lunch soon. I'm going 3-3. Oh, maybe he was talking to the grain car driver. Not totally sure. He might've been talking to me though. I never know. When my dad radios and says go faster or something, I always think immediately it's me, but he is dumping on the go with the grain car, so it might be him. And now that I think about it, it probably was. Oop, that's okay. Now it says 14 bushels per acre. I'm finishing the end of my row and just grabbing the tail off of it, picking my header up, and I'm not completely sure where we're roading. Maybe I'll just wait for my dad, which he should be coming up behind me fairly soon. Up to the north road. Yeah, that's where we want to go, okay? Okay, I was going to the west road. Thank you, Darcy. I didn't know what road. My header is bouncing a bit, so I'm gonna put it down a little bit. You never bring your header fully up when you're moving it because when it bounces in the field, it jars it. So it has to have room to go up and down a little bit even though you don't want it going up and down. And it is doing that quite a bit now because we're going across the furrows. And furrows is just kind of like when you garden. It's the little lines in the field where your plants are or where the plants were, we're now harvesting them. Whoa. Yeah, I just slowed down quite a bit there probably here too. Yep. Oh, now I see where lunch is. I'm not sure where the wind direction is though. Looking at this pickup driving down the road, I would say the wind is to the west. It's blowing to the west. So I'll park on the west side of the lunch table because as a combine driver, you have to look at where the wind's going because you don't want to blow all of that dust into lunch and on to people. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn a little bit more about how your food gets to your table. You can also visit the Kate's Egg website, katesag.com, and purchase a Kate's Egg shirt that's grown and sewn in the USA or a Kate's Egg tote bag that's also made in the USA. And you can follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K A T E S underscore A G, and on TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest. Twitter, pretty much everywhere else. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.